Welcome back to God Maths. Mathematical literacy begins here. Today we will discuss the basic laws and properties of indices. But before we get started, let's check the solution to our previous assignment under linear equations. Those were the solution to the previous assignments. Let's get started with today's topic. Indices, which are also called powers or exponents of numbers. In general, if any number is written in the form a raised to the power b, then a is called the base, and then b is called the index or exponent. You can also call it power. So if we have a number written in this form, then 5 is the base, and then 3 is the exponent. Today, we will look at the basic laws of indices and the basic properties of indices and how we can apply them. Let's move on to the laws of indices. There are three general laws of indices. The first one is generally written as this. And this law states that when we are multiplying numbers that have the same base, we maintain the base and then add the exponent. If we have indices with the same base, then we maintain the base and add the exponent. That is when the two numbers are multiplying. So, for example, if we have 5 raised to the power 2 times 5 raised to the power 4, then because the bases are the same, we will maintain that base and then add the exponent 2 plus 4, which will give us 5 raised to the power 6. We can also have 10 raised to the power 11 times 10 raised to the power negative 3. Then we maintain the base which is 10 and then add the exponent 11 plus negative 3 and that will give us 10 raised to the power 8. So basically if we have the same base that we are multiplying then we add the exponent. Let's look at the second law of indices. Law number 2 is generally stated as when we are dividing numbers that have the same base we maintain the base and then subtract the exponent so if we have 3 raised to the power 3 divided by 3 raised to the power 2 then that will give us 3 which is the base since it's the same we maintain and then subtract the exponent and that will give us 3 raised to the power 1. We could also have 6 raised to the power 7 divided by 6 raised to the power 5 and that will give us 6 which is the common base and then we subtract the exponent to get 6 raised to the power 2. The third law of indices When we have an exponent and it is raised to the power another exponent, then it, we have the multiplication of the two exponents. So if we have 3 raised to the power 2, all raised to the power 3, then that will give us 3, which is the base, and then the powers will multiply. 2 times 3, that gives us 3 raised to the power 6. We will also look at the properties of indices and how we can combine the laws and the properties of indices in our general mass calculations. Let's look at the properties of indices. Let's look at the properties of indices. The first property of indices is stated as any number that is raised to the power 0 is equal to 1. 
And so if we have 10 raised to the power 0, the answer is 1. 50 raised to the power 0, the answer is 1. X raised to the power 0, the answer is 1. If you are given 2 plus y raised to the power 0, then your answer should be 3 because y raised to the power 0 is 1. Then the second property of indices is when we have an exponent as a denominator, then that exponent is the same as when it is written in the numerator and the exponent is negated. And so 1 over 3 raised to the power 5 will give us 3 raised to the power negative 5. This is the denominator. If you write it as a numerator, it becomes negative 5. 1 over 6 raised to the power negative 3 will also give us 6 raised to the power 3 will give us 6 raised to the power negative 3. In the other way, if we have 1 over 5 raised to the power negative 2, then it will give us 5 raised to the power negative negative 2. We negate the exponent that we have. We negate 3 here. We negate 5 here. And so we will negate negative 2. And that will give us 5 raised to the power 2. Let's take the other laws. The third law is... When two numbers that are multiplied are raised to the power, then it is the same as when we find the power of the individual numbers and multiply them. 5 times 7, all raised to the power 2, is the same as 5 raised to the power 2 times 7 raised to the power 2. So when two numbers are multiplying and they are all raised to a certain power, then it is the same as when we multiply the powers of the individual numbers. The next one. When we are dividing two numbers, all raised to the power a certain number, then it is the same as when we find the powers of the numbers and divide them. Let's take our fifth and sixth properties. The fifth property is we have learned from the second property that if we have negative number, it is the same as when we find 1 over that number. And so if we have a over b raised to the power negative x, then this will give us 1 over a over b as taken from the second property. And this will give us 1 times b over a. And that gives us b over a. So if it is to the power negative x, then this is x and this is to the power x, and this is also to the power x, and that gives us our fifth property. The seventh property is the nth power of a number. And so if we have the cube root of m, then it is equal to m raised to the power 1 over 3 the x power of a number, and that is 1 over x. So the square root of 5 is the same as 5 raised to the power 1 over 2. This is square root. The cube root of 11 is the same as 11 raised to the power 1 over 3. We will now look at how we can apply these properties and the laws in solving general equations and problems in mathematics. Let's go through the following examples. Our first question A. 
2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. From the laws of indices, we know that if we have the same base and then we are multiplying, then we add the exponents. You notice that the first three bases are the same and then these are the same base too. Any number without an exponent is raised to the power 1. And so we will have 2, adding the exponent 1 plus 1 plus 1 gives 3, times 3, 1 plus 1 will give us 2. Note that we cannot simplify this further because the bases are not the same. Let's go to the second example. which is also one of the laws. If we have two numbers multiplying and they have a common power, then that is equal to when we raise to the power each number and multiply. So this is r times y and gives us r squared times y squared. Our third question is, 8 raised to the power 1 over 3 and that is equal to you should note that 8 is a multiple of 2 and it can be written as 2 times 2 times 2 and that will give us so let's write that 2 times 2 times 2 and it's all raised to the power 1 over 3 this from the first law will give us 2 raised to the power 3 and that is all raised to the power 3 then, when there is an exponent and another exponent, the two exponents will multiply. 3 cancels 3 and we have 2 raised to the power 1, which is the same as 2. Any number without an exponent is raised to the power 1. In the fourth one, question D. The common base here is 5x. And so we maintain the base, and since we are multiplying, we add the exponent. So 5x to the power negative 3, 5x to the power 7. And that gives us the base, which is 5x, and then we add the exponent. And this will give us 5x raised to the power 4. Negative 3 plus 7. Then... Next is our e. 5 raised to the power 2 times square root of 5. That gives us 5 raised to the power 2 times square root of 5 is 5 raised to the power half. We learned that the nth root is equal to the power 1 over n. Square root is this, and so power 1 over 2. And then Multiplication, so we add the exponents. 2 plus 1 over 2 will give us 5 over 2. You can check out addition of fractions. Next is our last question, F. That is 16 over 81 negative 3 over 4. Note that 16 is a multiple and can be written as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 81 can be written as 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. And so this will give us 2 1 1 1 1 to the power 4 over 3 to the power 4 all raised to the power negative 3 over 4. We have also learned that if two numbers are dividing and they have a common exponent, then each number takes the exponent. So that will give us 2 raised to the power 4, all raised to the power negative 3 over 4. Then 3 raised to the power 4, all raised to the power negative 3 over 4. 4 cancels 4, since the two powers will multiply. 4 cancels 4. And that gives us 2 raised to the power negative 3 over 3 raised to the power negative 3. This is also equal to 
When we have 2 raised to the power negative 3, it is the same as 1 over 2 raised to the power 3. That is one of the properties. Divided by 3 raised to the power negative 3 is also 1 over 3 raised to the power 3. That gives us 1 over 2 raised to the power 3 times 3 raised to the power 3 over 1. This is under fractions and we have 3 raised to the power 3 over 2 raised to the power 3. We will take some few simple questions as our assignment and when we meet next, we will take more complex examples. This is your assignment for today's lesson. In our next lesson, we will take more complex examples and also move on to exponential equations. Before you sign out, remember to subscribe to this channel for more video lessons. See you in our next lecture.